Hey everyone, it's Paul Stevens here again with another Sweet Serum tutorial. Today's tutorial in the developer series is going to be on the version 8 API. Um, this sometimes causes confusion because there's Sweet Serum version 7 and there's Sweet Serum version 8, and then there's an API version 4.1, which we did last time, and then an API version V8. Okay, so uh, just so there's no confusion. Uh, the V8 API can be used both on version 7 Sweet Serum and version 8 uh, Sweet Serum. So um, that caused me great confusion originally <laughs> trying to figure out you know just the nomenclature um, but it can be used on both no problem. There are slight adjustments that I'm going to cover if you're going to use it on uh, Sweet Serum 7 versus uh, Sweet Serum 8. Um, and uh, it basically has to do with the URL. Uh, you have to add legacy in the URL. We'll get to that in the tutorial. Um, the other thing is, uh, I you know, I do this for a living. If you need help with Sweet CRM, um, please reach out to me down below. Uh, also, I'd appreciate it if you find this video helpful. If you would like and subscribe to my channel, uh, that really helps my channel get more views and uh, allows me to make more videos. So um, anyway, let's uh, let's let's get into this here. Um, so the first thing that's that's going to have to happen here is you're going to have to create an API key in Sweet Serum 8 in order for this to work. OK, um, but even before that, if this is the first time that you are doing it, I'm just going to move myself out of the way here so we can continue on at the tutorial. Okay, so um, before you start in the in the there's a link in the blog article. So I'm going to put all the code and everything that I've done here in a blog article, and there's going to be a link down below. Um, please go to my blog article and get it. Um, but in the documentation, there are a few things set up things you have to do in order to sort of set the the encryption key for OAuth two. Okay, and basically what you want to do is log into SSH and just run these uh, couple commands in the directory that it says to run it in. Okay, And here's another one of those things, a uh, tip. If you're in version 7, this is the right URL. Um, if you are in version uh, Sweet Serum 8, um, you're going to want to go to uh, public slash legacy API <laughs> uh, v8 OAuth2 in order to run these commands. Okay, so I'm going to assume you've done that. Uh, I'm not going to actually do that now because I, I, I did that myself in my own environment. Um, but you're going to have to run those before we start. Okay, so the second thing we're going to want to do here is um, I've got a test environment set up. Okay, and in Sweet Serum 8, you're going to have to set up your OAuth2 keys. Okay, so the first part here, um, if I just go to admin. And OAuth2 clients and tokens. Okay, I, I've already set one up. Okay, I'm not going to reset it up. Um, but there's a couple things that are important here. There, there are two ways to connect. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the client credentials method. Okay, uh, the password grant method is pretty much the same, except that in addition to the API keys, you have to also send the username and password. Okay, so um, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, you can set it up as either password grant or client credentials. Okay, in this case, all the examples I'm going to give you are client credentials. Um, and so, when you create an OAuth key, okay, so if I go new client credentials, okay, or new password client, okay, so those are the two options. Um, in in this tutorial, I'm going to do client credentials, okay. And the difference is client credentials. You only need the secret. And the um, OAuth client I public ID. Okay, that's it. And then you can get your authorization and get in. If you go with the password grant, you need username, password, and the the uh, keys. Okay. So anyway, you will basically put your name in. You're going to put a big long gobbledygook uh, kind of key here. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you can decide whether you want it to be confidential or not. If it's confidential, you can never see it again. Um, 
and then I, I actually I've never done it. It's not confidential. That's a good question. <laughs> Whether you would, can see it again if it's not confidential. But anyway, um, set it in there uh, and then save it. And then what it's going to look like is uh, this test one here that I've set up. Okay. So you're going to get, hopefully, you've cut and paste that private key away somewhere because you're not going to get it again. Um, and you are going to need the ID that it assigns it, okay? And then you can see here the grant type is client credentials. So once we've got that set up, we're, we're able to use our API, okay? So I'm gonna go to Postman here, and um, I'm gonna send a request, it's a post request, okay? And I'm gonna send that over to uh, my URL and again, the test environment I'm using is version 8, so that you can see the URL is slightly different. It's slash legacy slash API slash access underscore token, okay? The other thing to note is in these URLs, what is capitalized and what is not is super important. So if you make a mistake, it, it just won't work. <laughs> okay, I know that from frustration. Okay, so uh, our headers... Uh, in this case, uh, I don't have any, um, but you could put like, you know, respond, uh, type a JSON or whatever. But what's, what's key here is in the body, we want to put the grant type, okay? And I've selected uh, the, the form URL encoded, okay? Grant type is client credentials. And then client ID is your client ID. Okay, and then the client secret is the client secret. And I've just set up variables here for this. So if you're not familiar with Postman, um, you can set up an environment, okay, over here. Um, and then, so for example, here I've sent up a bunch of variables for the client ID, the client secret, the sweet CRM URL, the access token, and the password, okay? So in the, um, where were we here? In the in the actual um, test that we're sending, uh, I'm just going to put the variable, and it's going to grab that, so I don't have to keep entering it every time. Okay, so but just so you guys know that that's what that means. Okay, so it's going to respond back when I send that with, um, and I'm not going to do it again because I'm going to have to refresh everything, <laughs> or maybe I should uh, just to show you what's going to happen here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to send that request. Okay, and see I got, I got a new access token back. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use that in my subsequent requests to uh, be able to get authorization to get a response, okay? Um, so the first example that I give is um, how to get, uh, get a, a list of leads, okay? So uh, I've already got this sort of preset up here and you'll see that a um, couple things here. The URL is the URL, okay? And it's legacy API V8 module leads, okay? If you're gonna do accounts, it would be accounts, okay? Um, and then content type in the header is gonna be application vnd.api plus JSON, okay? And again, all this stuff is in the, in the blog article. You can go and copy and paste it. The authorization is going to be bearer and then the access code. So I could just cut and paste my access code in here, but instead I've got like this environment set up with variables. So I'm just going to re put the new um, access token in here. Okay. And I got to put it in both places. Let me just get rid of this one. Okay, um, so, and then save it. So now I've saved my variables. I'm gonna go back to my collection. But again, in your case, if you haven't set up variables and you don't wanna set up variables, um, all you really need to do is paste the token that we just copied from the previous request into here, okay? So now uh, if I hit send, I'm going to get, if everything works out properly, <laughs> Uh, my lead back. Okay, so it's going to give me an array here. It's going to be the lead, the lead ID, and then all the fields in the lead. Now, you can review the documentation. You can filter the leads. You can uh, request back specific 
values for the lead, all that kind of stuff. But this should give you a general idea how, how to use it, okay? So the uh, second example uh, that I do here is how to get a specific lead, okay? So here's my lead ID, okay? So I'm gonna, from this lead, I'm going to just copy it, okay? And then I'm gonna request this specific lead now, okay? So um, I've got this set up already as a, as a previously. So same thing, legacy API module leads. The only difference here is at the end, we are gonna paste in the ID of the lead that we want in the URL. In the body, there's gonna be nothing because everything's gonna be done in the URL. We're just requesting a lead with that ID, okay? Header is going to be the same content type and then authorization is the bearer access token and um, That's it. So if I hit send now We get the lead back. Okay, so That's how that works fairly straightforward My next example is how do we add a new lead? Okay, so this one's a, a requires a little bit more complication, but not much. Okay, so uh, We are going to create a lead Okay, so in this case we're legacy API V8 module. Okay, we don't have to specify the module because we're gonna do that in our body, okay? So the header is the same, exactly the same. We got our token, our content type, and our accept type, okay? However, in the body, we are gonna add a, an array of what we're gonna send in, okay? So we're, we're, the data is gonna be leads and the attributes of those leads, first name, last name, email, phone work, and the description okay so <clears throat> and again this is set as raw and in this case instead of get I, I probably should have mentioned that in the other ones but they were all get um, except for the access token which is a post okay and when you create a lead you're going to want to do a post so we want post in this case instead of get okay so uh, we're going to send that Okay, and it just, you see it created a new lead with a new ID, okay? So that's done. Uh, I Maybe at the end here, I'll show you actually in Sweet CRM and uh, you, you can see that it actually created it. Okay, so if I sort this, oh, it's already sorted by date. Okay, you can see there's the Jane Doe that I just created. Okay, so uh, that is my third example, creating a lead. And the last example is um, updating, uh, actually not the, the last example, but the second last example, <laughs> we're gonna update a lead. Okay, so in this case, we wanna get this lead ID and let's say instead now that we've created this lead, we want to update it, like change the phone number or something. Okay, so um, we are going to update a lead. Okay, and the difference again in this case here, you can see it's a patch. So it's not a get, it's not a post, it's a patch. Okay, and it's legacy API v8 and module. And again, we don't have to specify the module because we do that in the data type. Okay, the headers are exactly the same, the body. Is going to be data leads okay and I'm gonna put my the new lead ID here of the lead that I just created okay and let's make the phone number like 111 111 111 okay um, so now if I send that okay if you can see the lead ID should match and it changed the phone number. So let's let's just go check out Sweet CRM. Oh, I think I got a I got too much stuff open here. <laughs> okay, so let's just refresh that. And you can see our phone number 111111 has been updated for Jane Doe. Okay. So uh, let's get back to Postman. And uh, that's all pretty straightforward. The next example is uh, a query. So let's say you wanna look up a lead by phone number, okay? 
and uh, this is often when you're using a, a phone system or something like that something you would often want to do um, so in this case uh, the header is going to be exactly the same okay the body is going to be blank we're not going to um, we're not going to put anything in the body everything's going to be in the URL that we need okay and if you have a look at the documentation uh, here's what you want to do so legacy API v8 module leads and then question mark filter and then the name of the field we want to look up okay so it's going to filter all the leads uh, by phone underscore work okay and then it's equal so that's EQ there's a there's a bunch of operators there you'll see in the documentation um, and it's not equals it's EQ <laughs> um, I've made that mistake before okay and then let's look up our the one we create so one 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 okay so that's our query that we're looking up here and you can do more than one so you can say phone work is this and I don't know day created or whatever um, but you can make this URL query uh, however you like but right now we're just gonna look up the lead by phone number so if I hit send okay um, you can see I get the lead uh, and in the array here hopefully we can see the phone number Yeah, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, let's see. Did I get? Did I actually get the right lead? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so let's uh, figure out what's going on here. Uh, okay, so here's the issue. Um, in the URL here, it's phone work equal and uh, for some reason the uh, equal sign and then the phone number okay <laughs> so uh, I, I will make sure I've got that uh, syntax correct on my blog article um, but it is the operator uh, and the, fo the the phone number we're looking for and it returns the lead that we just created Jane Doe okay so uh, that all works uh, everything seems to work there um, there, there are a number of other um, methods that you can use to update a record. You can like create relationships and all kinds of other things. Um, I'm just going to cover the basics here, but the sort of syntax and the method of, of doing the other versions or, or the other methods of updating records um, is the same. And you'll see here in this lead here, I, I got a bunch of other stuff here like uh, the, the related relationships to other things okay so I I can also request like I can get relationship and then get all the relationships that are related to this lead ID there's a number of different things that that you can do anyway this should give you a good framework to test um, and in the next um, session I'm going to actually do some code and I'm going to actually do it by code uh, maybe do like a contact form from sweet CRM or something or from uh, WordPress and push the contact in using uh, version 8 API kind of similar to what we did in the version 4 tutorial okay so anyway guys hope you liked it um, again do this for a living you need help with uh, your sweet CRM installation uh, building custom APIs um, you know training designing your sales automation you know all that kind of stuff I do that all day long okay <laughs> so uh, feel free to reach out to me my contact information is below and again if this was helpful please like and subscribe to my video see you next time